with four world championship fights. Every single fight on this pay-per-view is a world championship showdown and could very well be a main event anywhere in the world. We will start off with our pay-per-view opener. This one for the WBC as flyweight championship of the world. This man is the challenger. 18 wins, no losses, one draw. 12 wins coming by way of knockout. 28 years of age from Ciudad Bolivar, Venezuela, training out of Roselle Park, New Jersey. An experienced amateur who debuted back in 2017, having come off the biggest win of his career as he topped the former world champion, Angel Acosta. He looks to make himself into the history books and become a world champion from his home country of Venezuela. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Angelino Cordova. Buenas tardes a todos los presentes, al equipo de prensa. Pues primeramente dando las gracias a Dios por estar en este momento compartiendo dicho momento, pues muy alegre, muy contento eh, en, en celebrar eh, ya este día de rueda de prensa y pues esperando que todo se mantenga de bien y que pues sea un programa eh, lleno de bendición para todos. La verdad, eh, muy contento, muy contento. Muchas gracias. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for being here. I want to thank the members of the media for being here at this press conference. And I'm really happy, I'm really excited to be a part of this event. I hope that everything turns out well and that everyone is full of uh, blessings and enjoys what's going to be a great event, a great fight between us and for the whole card, too. So thank you very much for having me here. Angelina Cordova, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we have Martin Botzer, our outstanding translator here as well. So that is the challenger for our pay-per-view opener. Now let's meet the champion. 20 wins, two losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He has trained under the guidance of renowned trainer, that being Eddie Reynoso, captured his title back in 2019 with a ninth round stoppage over Christopher Rosales. The one thing I hear about this man is that boy is he hitting his stride and he has looked sensational in training camp and really wants to put forth a major statement on Saturday as he defends his crown against Angelino Cordova. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBC flyweight champion of the world from Mexico, Julio Cesar Martinez. Buenos días a todos, muchas gracias por, por estar aquí, muy contento, muy emocionado de, de regresar al ring, pues hubo unos inconvenientes, pero bendito sea Dios, ya, ya estamos de regreso, contentos, emocionados, motivados, y pues ya sabe, como siempre, ¿verdad? Con todo menos con miedo. Thank you very much, guys, everybody, everybody for being here, and I'm so excited, so pumped, so motivated to be here, and like I always say, with everything but with fear, right? Thank you very much to Julio Cesar Martinez. Let's give it up for the champion, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now we will transition to our second pay-per-view fight, this one being for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. And the challenger in this one. Well, Australia is represented in more ways than one, not just with the esteemed Tim Zhu. This man has a record of 31 wins, four losses, 19 wins coming by way of Naka. He is the number one ranked mandatory WBA challenger at 160 pounds. Joining us from Melbourne, Australia, he is looking to extend his win streak to five, having won four straight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Zarafa. Thanks guys, I just want to uh, thank everyone that's uh, shown their love and support, everyone that's made the, uh, the flight over. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Um, I ho I hopefully we go back with two Australian world titles, or three, because Tim's fighting for, for two. Um, PBC, Al Heyman, thanks for the opportunity. 
and uh, Aussie, 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 let's do it. Michael Zaraffa, ladies and gentlemen. Also, Michael, I need to find out your tailor from Australia. That's a very sharp suit, my friend. Very much. I'm taking some notes on that. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the reigning WBA middleweight champion of the world, a Cuban star who resides here in Las Vegas. He is boxing's oldest reigning world champion, still going strong at 40 years of age. Uh, he certainly has been in there against the world's best time and time again. An extensive amateur background has been extremely successful as a professional, and yet he still c competes at this very high level and, and certainly has his sights focused on bigger things if he's able to top Michael Zarafa on Saturday. But it's great to see him back in the ring. He provided us with absolute barn burners against the likes of Jared Hurd, took Canelo Alvarez, gave him a very stiff test years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBA middleweight champion of the world. Here is Ed Lundy, the American Dream Alada. Buenas tardes a todos. Este, quiero darle las gracias a Amazon Prime, PBC, a Luz de Cuba Junior, a Etín Serafa, a Etín Lara, por, por darme esta oportunidad de estar de, de regreso en, en 30 de marzo. Listo, estamos listos ya, nos vemos el 30 de marzo. Es lo único que puedo decir. Gracias. Gracias. Quiero agradecer a PBC, Amazon Prime, eh, Luis de Cuba Junior, Team Serafa, Team Lara por hacer esto posible. And I'm going to see you on Saturday, May, March 30th. And all I have to say is I'm ready to go. I'm pumped up. And you're going to see a great fight. All right. All right. That is a very motivated Ed Aslandi Ladam that will be defending his world championship against Michael Zarafa. That, the second pay-per-view fight. It is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, this upcoming Saturday night from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Now, before I get ready to introduce the next man involved in the co-main event, I want to acknowledge Isaac Cruz Sr., who is in the house, ladies and gentlemen, the father of Isaac Cruz. Let's give a round of applause to Isaac Cruz Sr., who is here. Great to see him during fight week and has been so instrumental in the success of his son. Now let's meet his son. 25 wins, two losses, one draw, 17 wins coming by way of knockout. A native of Mexico City who has established himself as one of the sport's most exciting fighters. I can recollect back, it was October of 2020, it was the first fight when Trevante Davis fought Leo Santa Cruz and he wiped out Diego Magdaleno, vicious body shots in I believe under a minute. And that is when I knew firsthand that he was a force to be reckoned with. He has been in battles against the likes of Gervonta Davis. Most recently, last July, defeated Giovanni Cabrera and has such a loyal fan following because he brings it from the moment the bell rings to the moment the bell ends in the 12th. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Damas y Caballeros desde Mexico, Isaac Pitbull! Cruz. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas tardes a todos. Muchas gracias por todo. Gracias a Al Haimon, a PBC, a Sean Gibbons, a todos y a este bocón también por darme la oportunidad y venimos a quitar el, el bocón y el título del mundo. Muchas gracias. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank uh, PBC, Amazon, Sean Gibbons, and everybody that has made this fight possible, and also to this loudmouth over here, because I'm here to shut his mouth and take the belt. So get ready. All righty, Zach Pitbull Cruz, ladies and gentlemen, he is the challenger. And now let's meet the champion, but before I get into the specifics on the champion, I want to acknowledge the promoter of Rolando Roli Romero, Mr. Leonard Ellerby, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. I believe Leonard is around here somewhere, so let's have a round of applause for Leonard Ellerby and also the esteemed trainer of Rolando Roli Romero, Mr. Ismael Salas as well. So round of applause for Ismael Salas, who has uh, quite a busy night on Saturday. Well, this man 
15 wins, one loss, 13 wins coming by way of knockout. He is, he came coming off of a very impressive win when he stopped Ismael Barroso last May. And the thing about that fight is that he had to dig deep and he came out and he never, his confidence never wavered and he was able to go out there and he was able to finish off Ismael Barroso. Tony Weeks stepped in and waved off the fight. I would have to say, though, he's been in a battle with Gervonta Davis. He's been in some big fights, and he's one of the most unique personalities that the sport has seen in quite some time. Let's just say that he beats to his own drum. He does things the roly way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBA super lightweight champion of the world. Here is Rolando Roli Romero. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Uh, I just want to thank Al Hammond, my promoter, Mayor of Promotions, um, Louis DeCuba Jr., and uh, well, everybody else who came out here to support me. Everybody thinks it's going to be a difficult fight, but I think it's going to be a very easy fight for me. He's going to run right into something because he's stupid. So, yeah, that's that. All right, well, confidence in abundance is Rolando Roli Romero, certainly ahead of Saturday's collision as world title defense against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for our main event. This is going to be for the WBO and the vacant WBC Super Welterweight Championships of the World. Before I do that, I want to bring up an Acknowledge the challenger, Freddy Fundora, who is the father and the trainer of the Tyrant Inferno, Sebastian Fundora. There is Freddy Fundora over here. Round of applause for Freddy Fundora. The Fundora family, certainly you have Gabriela as well, who's the world champion, and Sebastian looking to follow in her footsteps. Also, the promoter of Sebastian Fundora, Samson Lukowitz, ladies and gentlemen. Talk about talent. This man knows how to find it anywhere on the globe. This man with the record of 20 wins, one loss, one draw, 13 wins coming by way of knockout, 26 years of age from Coachella, California, standing nearly six feet, six inches tall. He's been involved in some memorable matchups, including the 2022 fight of the year against Erickson Hammer Lubin. Every time this guy has fought, he always brings it. I mean, no one thing about Sebastian Fundora is that he will entertain fans and he will risk himself to go out there and throw punches in bunches because he loves to entertain. He loves high contact. He loves to mix it up and he loves to go toe to toe. And now on Saturday, he looks for the biggest moment of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundura. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out. You know, uh, I want to thank Samson. I want to thank Al Heyman, thank the PVC team and Amazon Prime Video for giving me this chance. I want to thank Tim Sue as well for giving me the opportunity. But uh, what a change of events, huh? From opening the card to now fighting our main event right here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas. It's going to be great. Walking in, uh, Sam Watson told me I must have had an angel or someone praying for me because uh, this is a big opportunity. And this is a big opportunity we're going to take advantage of and become world champion on Saturday night. Sebastian Fundora, ladies and gentlemen, yes, Fundora was supposed to fight Sergei Bohachuk, but due to the injury to Keith Thurman, he now is in the main event against the man who I'm getting ready to introduce. Well, first of all, before I get ready to acknowledge him, I want to acknowledge I Igor Gulabev, the trainer of Tim Zhu, and also George Rose, the CEO of No Limit Boxing as well, a very instrumental in the success of Tim Zhu. This man, 24 wins, no losses, 17 victories coming by way of knockout. A native of Sydney, Australia, certainly a rising star. He is the son of the Hall of Famer, Kostya Zub. Tim comes off of a red-hot 2023. Oh, what a run that he had, beating the likes of Tony Harrison, Brian Mendoza, and Carlos Ocampo. He is a superstar in his home country of Australia. But the one thing that he's always said 
is that I want to come here to Las Vegas and headline a massive night of boxing as a world champion. Well, Tim, ask and you shall receive and you've earned every bit of it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the pride and joy of Australia. Here is the undefeated and the reigning and defending WBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Here is Tim Azoo. Look, we're finally here. It's been, a, it's been a long road, uh, but I've dreamt of this moment my whole life, you know. Every, every moment that I've done has led to this point, and, and I'm glad to be doing it and representing everyone and, and doing it on this uh, specific, specific day. You know, it's been a change of events, but you know what? The show goes on. We saved it. Uh, destiny awaits, and uh, I can't wait to put on a show. Uh, I should be having two belts now. I don't know why, why that belt's there. He, he hasn't earned it yet. Uh, it should be in the middle here. But Saturday night, we get to, we get to fight for, for both of them. For me, this, this period of time, it's about collecting belts, collecting legacy. And again, as I said previously before, the greatest boxing family ever lived. It's happening right now, right here. So tune in. Tim Zhu, ladies and gentlemen, as Tim mentioned, he's looking to further that family legacy. Well, what a start that he has had. And now I'm going to talk with the fighters. I'll start off with Angelino Cordova. Angelino, have you thought about the moment that if you're able to top your adversary on Saturday when they say, and the new WBC flyweight champion of the world, what that would mean for you and your home country of Venezuela? <laughs> Cabeza en la almohada. ¿Te imaginas el momento en el que vas a poder eh, eh, decir y el nuevo y, y todo lo que va a significar para Venezuela, no? ¿Qué, qué, ¿Cómo te lo imaginas a eso? Oye, bueno, oye, sí, oye, la verdad, eh, sí me lo imagino, sí me imagino ese momento. Y pues no es desde ahora, desde hace mucho tiempo, sí, y pues ya se ha llegado el momento, se acerca y pues y nada, estoy muy lleno de emoción y pues nada, solo llegará el momento, esperando. I've been picturing this not just in the past few days, but for a long time now, and I can't wait till that moment comes and I get to make my country proud, and you know, it's, I'm full of emotion, I'm full of excitement, I'm so excited and I can't wait to make it come true. What kind of fight are you expecting from the champion Julio Cesar Martinez? ¿Qué tipo de pelea esperas de parte de Martinez como rival? ¿Qué tipo de pelea esperas de parte de Martinez como rival? Pues, eh, yo, yo vengo como, como dicen la música, pues al ritmo que él toque yo voy a bailar, al, al ritmo que él esté yo voy a estar. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be like a concert, right? And you gotta dance to the beat. So what? So whatever beat Martinez brings, I'm gonna dance right along to it, and I'm gonna be very comfortable doing so. All right, Angelina Cordova. Now I'm gonna go to the champion Julio Cesar Martinez. Julio Cesar, being the first fight on the pay-per-view, how big of an honor is this for you as you prepare to defend your world championship against Angelina Cordova? Qué tan honrado se sentís de ser la primera pelea del pay-per-view por Amazon Prime. Pues muy contento, muy emocionado que vamos a regresar pues de, de unos meses de inactividad y pues unos problemas que hubieron ahí, pero pues contento, motivado como siempre, no al 100 sino al mil y como siempre, ¿verdad? Con quien sea y donde sea, para darlo todo arriba del ring. I'm really, I'm really excited to be back after a couple of months away. We had some setbacks, but... You know, in, in the end, it's all about what happens inside the ring. I'm really, I'm really happy, really excited to do it. And I'm going to go up against anybody, anytime. I'm always saying it, and I'm saying it now, too. Let's bring it on. All right, Julio Cesar Martinez, ladies and gentlemen. Greatly appreciate him, and good luck to both men. Now, Michael Zarafa. Michael, you are trained by Nonito Donaire. You have been your corner, and obviously I know that you are looking to create your own history. How influential has the four-division world champion been in your preparation for this matchup? 
it's been huge. You know, I'm super grateful for having Anita in my corner um, and, he, and his beautiful wife, Rachel. You know, he's a very spiritual fighter. You know, everyone knows that, you know, physically I'll push the body, but, uh, you know, mentally, emotionally, he's worked throughout the whole camp. And, um, you know, I've flown all over the other world, other side to, uh, to be an opponent. So I'm here to, to take what's rightfully mine. This fight should have been done 13 months ago. And, um, you know, come Saturday, there will be a, a new world champion. For you and for Australian boxing, how big of a night is this for the entire country in terms of how far boxing has come in Australia? Yeah, this is huge. Um, you know, you've got the likes of Liam Wilson fighting tomorrow night from Australia. Um, you've got myself, you've got Tim Zhu. Um, you know, there's George Cambosis, you know, Liam Paro. You know, the list goes on. We're, we're putting a, a small country on a, on a big map, you know, and uh, we're taking over come Saturday night. All right, Michael Zarafa, the challenger for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. Now, Ed Islandi Latam. Ed Islandi, you know, they always say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. You've been off for a bit of time. How much have you missed competing inside the ring, and how much are you looking forward to going head-to-head -head against Michael Zarafa? Ed Islandi, bueno, te extrañamos, ¿verdad? Se ha pasado un tiempo de que te vimos pelear, pero qué tan emocionado estás vos de poder estar de regreso en el cuadrilátero y demostrar a la gente de lo que sos capaz. Bueno, estoy contento de estar de regreso en, eh, el 30 de marzo, este, muy emocionado y estoy muy activo y me siento suficientemente bien para derrotar a Serafa el 30 de marzo. Ya estamos en tiempo, ya que en estos momentos, yo sé que es lo que la gente le gusta, ¿no? pero yo no soy de hablar mucho, yo soy de demostrar en el ring y Serafa y su team me, me verán el 30 de marzo. Look, I'm not a big talker. I'm someone that proves what I'm worth inside the ring. And Tim Seraf is going to realize that on Saturday night. I'm very, I'm very glad to be back in the ring after, after some time off. But look, I've stayed active. I feel ready. And you'll see what I'm capable of. What kind of statement are you looking to make on Saturday? ¿Qué tipo de mensaje estás tratando de enviar este sábado? Este sábado voy a enviar un mensaje que todavía hay Erilando y Lara para rato y voy a seguir siendo campeón a 160 libras para seguir con los, peleadores, con los mejores peleadores. The statement is that Eris Landy Lara is still here to stay. I'm not going anywhere, and I want to go up against the best after this fight as well. Eris Landy Lara, ladies and gentlemen, the WBA middleweight champion of the world. Now co-main event, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Isaac, we see that you look in outstanding physical shape. Uh, what do you feel the difference is going to be on Saturday against Rolando Roli Romero? Isaac, te vemos en una forma física espléndida. ¿Qué pensás que es lo que marcará la diferencia contra Roy Romero este sábado? Eh, pues el trabajo que venimos haciendo durante toda la preparación, antes de que acabara el año también, y las ganas de ser nuevo campeón del mundo y ganar el campeonato cueste lo que cueste. It's all going to be about the foundation we have set as a team training since the end of last year, really. I want to be the new champion. That's the main goal, and nobody's going to take my size away from that. What did you learn in your first world title opportunity against Gervonta Davis that you feel you're going to be able to utilize to your benefit on Saturday against Roley? ¿Cuál fue la lección principal que aprendiste de tu pelea contra Gervonta que, que, que pensás que se podría aplicar en esta pelea de sábado contra Roley? Eh, el aprendizaje fue de no dejarle nada a los jueces y por eso me preparé. Traigo el aire suficiente para estar tirando segundo tras segundo golpes. I learned that I don't have to leave it up to the judges. Uh, I, I want to go out there and throw punch after punch. I'm in good enough shape to do so from beginning to end. Does he annoy you when he says, I'm going to knock you out, and he even said in his opening comments, it's going to be easy? ¿Te molesta cuando Rolly dice cosas como que te va a noquear, que va a ser fácil, que, que vas a ser golpeado por él porque sos estúpido? ¿Qué te, qué te generan ese tipo de comentarios? Pues nada, él, él está yo creo que más estúpido porque piensa que voy a subir amarrado de las manos o con los ojos vendados, pero él también no se da cuenta que va a estar sentado en un barril de pólvora y que él también va a salir noqueado. If he thinks I'm stupid, he's even stupider. Because what does he think? That I'm going to have like a bandage around my eyes and my hands tied? If, if he thinks that I'm just going to lay down, he's very, very mistaken. And he's going to realize it on Saturday night. Roly, going to your point and furthering that, uh, why do you feel it's going to be easy? I know yesterday you mentioned to me it could very well be the fight of the year, but now today you're saying it's going to be easy. You're saying that he's going to run into something. Why do you feel it is going to be sort of, quote-unquote, uh, a walk in the park for you on Saturday? 
Well, I mean, he said it himself right now. He's just going to come over there and throw and throw and throw and throw. He does the same shit over and over and over again. One over here, one over here, gets punched over here, gets punched over here. Same shit over and over again. What do you have on your, uh, you have a chain that I see. Can um, you explain that to, to the uh, fans and the media around the world? So explain to us what you are wearing. This right here is my good luck charm. It's Chihuahua Cruz. So it is Chihuahua Cruz. Let's go ahead and take a look at that with our camera. Isaac, how do you respond to that? He's wearing a chain calling you a uh, Chihuahua, and he's wearing you on his neck. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. Okay, I'm not going to give it to you after the fight. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. I can give you the belt, but I can give you the chain if you want after the fight. So, Roly, are you going to put that chain on the line as well with your belt? No, he already got after I knocked his ass out. All right, so in terms of how much of a statement that would be, if you follow through on your prediction and you're able to knock out Isaac Pitbull Cruz, how big would that be for you uh, in your career? We can go ahead and just pass along the microphone. There you go. How big would it be if you're able to follow through on your prediction and knock him out? Because, I mean, he's very durable, very determined, went the distance with Javante Davis. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's a great opportunity that, uh, that I've been given over here. But in reality, the opportunity is for him to try to win the belt. I'm already champion. I don't need him. I'm the one that made this fight. It wasn't him. Right or wrong? Well, you could have fought any variety of different guys. But why did you decide to settle on Isaac Cruz? Because I want to make a firefight. I want to make it fun. I want to make it fun for the fans. And this is the fight that all everyone's been asking for for the longest amount of time, right or wrong? Oh, you're right. Okay, so. Well, let's talk about doing, your I'm trainer. Doing, I'm doing everybody a favor right now. This is going to be a fun one. Y'all going to see. Tune in March 30th, Amazon Prime pay-per-view. Ismail Salas, we've been seeing videos of you. You've been, you know, working with Ismail Salas, moving around, doing a lot of feints and, and head movement. Uh, how much better do you feel with Ismail Salas that you guys are reunited? Honestly, it feels great. You know, it feels like I'm, you know, like, like I'm back at home. You know, like I say, he, he had a big influence on my, you know, especially before, right before I turned pro. Like, literally, I got signed to Floyd literally, what, two weeks after I, uh, you know, I, I, I left the gym. So, I mean, he had a big influence on me and me being the fastest person to ever get signed to a major promoter as well. Got started at 17, I got signed at 20. It's been an unbelievable journey. Rolanda Rolly Romero, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's focus in on our main event. Sebastian Fundorum, you took this fight on 11 days notice. You were supposed to fight on the card. Now you have the biggest opportunity of your career. You can pick up two world championships as you go head to head against Tim Zhu. What kind of moment are you looking to have on Saturday night on PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video? This is the moment that Tyron Inferno becomes world champion. My sister did it six, six, six months ago, now it's my turn. Did that really sort of invigorate you even that much more and everything else? I mean, we've heard it from fighters that you learn a lot when you have a stumble. Uh, how much has that impacted you as you prepare for the biggest moment of your career? You know, it, it, it happens in boxing, you know, uh, uh, I made a mistake, I paid for it. I feel like everything still lined up the way it should be. Uh, uh, um, they gave me this opportunity to fight Tim Sue. This is going to crown the best fighter at 154. All right, now let's go to the champion. We'll come back to you, Sebastian. Uh, Tim, you're going to be facing a, a literally a very tall task. Uh, for those that don't know, we talked about it yesterday, but this is the largest height disparity in a non-heavyweight fight. So, Tim, you know, he's not, he's literally very tall, and, and you know he's awkward, and he has a significant reach advantage. Uh, how have you been able to prepare for that on such short notice? Well, look, it's, it's quite hard to prepare, especially when you've got, well, 12 days. Uh, but a true champion just uh, rises to the occasion, adapts to everything that's put in front of them. So... You know, I came here as a, like a throwback fighter, and I, and I keep trying to put it, and I keep trying to be like that, you know, I, I am, I'm living the person that I, that I speak, I'm not, I'm not a bullshitter, I'm here to do exactly what I, what I say, and, and this is why I take the fight, and this is why, like, yes, height, of course, there's, there's, there's many advantages, but look, we're, 
we all bleed the same blood, so there's no difference between us. And, and if, if, you know, if you're watching history, Mike Tyson did a lot of damage in the heavyweight division back in the days, so I guess I'm taking inspiration from, from Iron Mike in this one. Tim, for you, I remember when you fought Terrell Gachet in Minneapolis a couple of years ago, but this is something that you've always wanted. It was, it was one thing to fight in the United States and, and headline, but you've always said about main eventing here in Las Vegas. Watching you during fight week, you look to be so relaxed, comfortable. You're dealing with the media obligations. Uh, you're taking it all in stride. Is it because you always knew that if you put the work in, that you would be here at this moment? Of course, you know, every, every, as I said previously, every moment has led to this. This is my 12th time doing pay-per-view, so I'm, I'm used to this, this bright, bright lights and, and all of this stuff. But I had a vision from, uh, I guess, from a young age. Uh, in 2009, I came here to watch Manny Pacquiao versus, versus Miguel Cotto, and I remember I had a tweak. I had a tweak in my, in my brain saying that this one day, this is where I want to be. And now I'm walking into this press conference and Miguel Cotto's sitting right here and I'm full fanboying. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so, you know, like, it's a, it's a crazy moment for me to, to be in this position and, I, and I'm taking it with, uh, with both hands. Sebastian, what kind of fight are you expecting out of Tim Zhu? We watched him last year. He went 3-0, and looked phenomenal in all three of his outings. But what kind of fight are you expecting out of him? I expect the, the best fight from Tim Su. You know, this is, again, this is, I think, the best fight you can make at 154. He's uh, the number one in the weight right now. I think this, this fight with the unification of the WBO and WB, this will crown the new champion of the weight division. Tim, what kind of fight are you expecting from the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora? You know that he loves to mix it up on the inside. Are you expecting anything less? No, I, I feel like he's coming in for the brawl. He's good at what he does. He's got these long lanky arms and uh, I know the shots. It's all about eliminating what he's got and uh, showing what he's not good at and, and, and that's the best thing about boxing is that he gets to expose my weaknesses and I get to expose his weaknesses. So it's, it's, it's going to be one, one hell of a barner, let's just say that. Sebastian, you're the underdog coming into this fight. Uh, does that motivate you at all? Is that sort of fuel for fire as you prepare on this opportunity on Saturday night, PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video? Uh, a lot of people say I have these advantages, and I do, I do have these advantages, but I always look at myself as the underdog. Even when I had the interim champion, I considered myself the underdog, so it's just time to prove again what we're made of. Is this sort of, have you even, you know, dreamt of how it could possibly be when you are able, if you're successful on Saturday, what holding both world titles would mean to you? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. This is my dream. This is my dream. I trained very hard my whole life to become and to fight on a stage like this, you know, uh, thank you to Samson, thank you to Al Heyman for giving me the, the opportunity to fight on this, uh, to fight my dream. And uh, come Saturday night, the dream come true. Tim, finally, before we go ahead and conclude, is this, assuming that everything goes your way on Saturday, is this the official declaration of the Tim Zhu era here in the United States, main eventing in Las Vegas for what I'm sure you want to be many times moving forward? Yeah, for sure. You know, this is step one to, to where I want to be. Uh, this is only a, a little part, you know. I've already won this belt uh, with Mendoza. Uh, now we go for the second. It should have been me, Mendoza, fighting for those two belts already. So uh, I don't know why his belt's there. Well, why am I saying his belt? Why, why is the, that belt even there? But yeah, this is a new era, and uh, there's plenty of big, big super fights to be made in the, in the near future. All right, before I let these guys go, I'm going to start off with Angelina Cordova real quick. Prediction time. How's it going to end against Julio Cesar Martinez? What's your prediction for the fight on Saturday? How does it end? Knockout? Puntos? How? Well... Yo, la verdad, eh, no voy a decir nada. La verdad, lo que voy a decir es lo que repetí el día de ayer. Eh, el rim va a echar chispa. Así que bueno, muy pendiente. Eso es lo que voy a decir. Muchas I'm not gracias. about to make a prediction, but I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday. You're going to see sparks fly. All right, Julio Cesar Martinez, your prediction against Angelino Cordova. Bueno, Julio, eh, también tu vaticinio, ¿cómo termina esta pelea? ¿Por nocao, por puntos? ¿Cómo la ves? Pues venimos bien preparados, venimos como siempre lo he dicho, no venimos al 100 sino al 1000. 
sabemos que es un peleador invicto, es, 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 es rápido y todo, venimos preparados para lo que sea, pero como siempre a dar lo mejor arriba del ring y que los dos bajemos con bien y a dar un, una buen, un buen sabor de pelea. I want to give the fans a great fight. I hope that we both give, give them not just a great fight, but that we both come out healthy after that. I'm going to come out at not 100%, a 1,000%, and it's going to be fireworks. People are going to love it. All right, good luck to both men. Michael Zarafa, your prediction, sir, for Saturday. Uh, come Saturday night, there'll be a new WBA world champion. Mark my words. Michael Zarafa predicting that he will be world champion. Ed is Landy Laram. How is the fight going to unfold against Michael Zarafa? Este, <laughs> vamos a trabajar duro el 30, el sábado, el 30 de marzo. Este, creo que se termina antes, antes de cerrar. Creo que lo voy a ganar. I'm going to work hard, and I'll tell you what. I think I'm going to knock him out, and not only that, it's going to happen before the sixth round. Wow, Ed Islandi, a lot of predicting a knockout in the first half of the fight. Very interesting. All right, co-main event, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Your prediction is the second time the charm for going after a world title. Bueno, Isaac, la segunda es la vencida. ¿Cuál es tu vaticinio para, para esta pelea por el título? Bajando Isaac como nuevo campeón del mundo. Isaac Cruz is going to be the new world champion. All right, Isaac Cruz, a man of few words. Rolando Roli Romero, you've been saying knockout the entire promotion. How is the fight going to end on Saturday? Knockout, so he's going to wake up off the canvas from his dream of becoming world champion. All right, Rolando Roli Romero, the WBA super lightweight champion of the world, now main event, the town inferno, Sebastian Fundora. Your prediction for your main event showdown against Tim Zhu. Uh -oh. The second we stepped into Las Vegas, we clocked in, you know, uh, I'm ready to put in my work and, and, and become world champion Saturday night. All right, Sebastian Fundora now. Tim Zhu, you are undefeated. How do you see the fight transpiring against Sebastian Fundora? As history will repeat, David versus Goliath, don't blink. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to all eight pay-per-view fighters. It is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video this upcoming Saturday from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Now we will pose off the fighters for their ceremonial face-offs. <coughs> the final exchange between Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundora. A little over 48 hours before they meet in the ring at T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. If you haven't already scanned that QR code on your screen and uh, of course you can go to mainevent.com.au. We are waiting to see the two boys face off in just a moment but Andre Ward, Peter Bedell are alongside me. What stood out for you between that exchange, Andre? Nothing out of the ordinary stood out. What I see is two fighters that are focused, two fighters that are dealing with the nerves. That's why it may seem like a fighter at this stage, uh, you know, a couple days away from the fight, they may seem a little somber. It's not that, it's just that they're cutting weight. Their mouth is dry, their stomach is, is grumbling, and they're just ready to fight. They're over the talk, and they're ready to get it on. So that's what I saw from both fighters. What I loved, Andre and Megan, was the composure of Tim Zhu. I mean, I think he's had the perfect balance in this fight week of composure, yet competitive fire. And, and he's got this raging intensity that is ready to explode. He, I get the feeling this is destiny for Tim Zhu. He's always felt like this is his home, this is his stage. He always wanted the big stage that his dad had, Kostya, against Zab Judah, one of the great wins for Australian boxing and now it goes the, the baton's passed from Costa to Tim and Tim feels like this is his playground and I think he's going to learn the hard way on Sunday Sebastian Fedora I think Tim will get this done Andre well to your point you can hear it in Tim Zhu's uh, initial remarks he said I'm yeah. finally here yeah. and for a fighter to make it to Las Vegas even if they're not you know even if they haven't fought here 20 times 10 times 
just the fact that you made it here is like a monkey off your back. Now you got to go perform. The lights will be bright Saturday night, but you can hear that in Tim Zhu that he's just happy to finally be in Las Vegas. And I don't know, Andre, how many fights you've seen of Tim in his earlier career, but one thing we've always talked about in Australia is, there's, as we say, there's levels in boxing, but the, every stage... Tim jumps again. He always makes the leap. It doesn't matter. Whenever he's been discounted or undermined, even against Jeff Horn, that was probably his breakthrough fight in Australia where he became the new poster boy for Australian boxing. Any test he's been given, he's passed. And I think, Andre, he can pass this test again and then continue on. I don't think we've seen the best of Tim yet. I don't think we have either. He's ascending, like you said, and that's what I watch when I see a young up-and-coming fighter, a young up-and-coming champion. I don't pay too much attention to what's said. I'm too busy watching what they're doing. And when I see the level raise and I see a fighter's level raise along with the moment, the coach's level raises with the moment, the team's level, that lets me know that we got something beautiful on our hands. And I do agree, Tim Zhu is in position to have a big statement fight come Saturday night. Well, we're looking at the two face off now. We're going to have a chat to Tim in a moment. He'll tell us what uh, Sebastian just said to him a moment ago. But what do you make of this, Andre? Yeah, if I was just tuning into this, I wouldn't believe that these two were in the same weight class. <laughs> but they are. These guys are going to fight Saturday night. And I'm very interested to see how Sebastian Fondora looks coming off of his knockout loss, how he deals with a fighter who, you know, he's, he's always the taller fighter. But I want to see how he deals with the style of Tim Zhu. And then for Tim Zhu, what adjustments do you make? How do you deal with a fighter like this? He probably never fought a fighter this tall. I want to see how he cracks this code. You know, it was interesting, Andre, two days ago, I was in the gym watching Tim Zhu, and he was working on the overhand left, the very punch that Brian Mendoza used to drop Fandora. And Fandora's shown he's been vulnerable, Andre, despite the height. He was dropped against Lubin, and he came back to win that fight. But Lubin was ahead on the cards that night, coming into the eighth round. So I, I think he's shown he's, his chin's vulnerable. And I, and I think Tim, with his body punches and then the overhand left that he's working on, I think he's got the power to knock him out. Yeah, make no, no doubt about it. Fandora will be a difficult um, sort of cold to crack, just given the size and the reach, like you said. But if you're Tim Zhu, you have to be excited because even though Fandora's that tall, he sacrifices his height. 